2018. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, dash Oracle, O-R-C-L-E dot com. No, Ord dash Oracle, yeah, dot com. Tim Ward, what's going on, brother? Well, you know, we were on Tuesday, and I showed... Uh, that SPX t uh, uh, XPX uh, TLT ratio. Yes. And and the market supposed to pull back, and obviously yesterday was a down day. And now, uh, if you look at chart one, I got another chart that's probably going to go right back up. Okay, um, so is the is the number one chart the need two out of three? Yes, it's chart one. Okay. Or, yeah, it's, it's a hour chart of the uh, BIX. Okay, one second. Hold on. Let me just, when I do these sometimes. Okay, one second. I got it. Thirty percent. Okay, so one second. I get these mixed up. I think. Hold on. Once. So the one I want to look at, Tim, is. Oh yeah, I got it. No, I had it right. Yeah. Okay, I got the uh, VIX. I got it. Yes. Yeah, okay. The VIX. Actually, that's that's an hour chart. And okay. So I'm kind of looking. So I don't think this decline is going to continue. You know, it's just uh, we had a kind of a bearish sign on Tuesday. Um, anyhow, this is an hour chart, so this is like a short-term chart. It's not like it's going to predicting something, you know, that's going to rally for the next several months. But it, it does predict, I think, it'll rally maybe for the next several days. I think we're probably making a bottom. I'll make that case here. But, you know, the, the, the second window down from the top is the, is the hourly VIX. Okay. And the top window is the RSI for the VIX. Uh, the bottom window is the um, rate of change on a three period. Uh, and the next window up is the percent volume. Um, so anyhow, in general, uh, when two out of three indicators uh, hit into bullish cat territory, yesterday all three of them hit, uh, you're looking probably at a short term low in this vicinity. Okay. So what, what it kind of measures is the velocity of the VIX. When the, when the VIX really plum or rallies really hard, you know, that that shows kind of a fear thing. Yes. The VIX is kind of, they call it even a fear gauge. Uh, so I'm kind of watching that uh, as a fear gauge, suggesting that we had a lot of fear yesterday on yesterday's decline. Uh, so It's pretty um, amazing anyhow, that those, we're at highs and you just get a little sell-off and you get a lot of fear, isn't it? It's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. You, you, get, you get a lot of fear. And so... Um, that's usually a bullish on short because everybody hit the sell button yesterday. Yeah, and so I try to pick out indicators that you know gets too exuberant to the downside. And that's a bad. That's actually a bullish sign. Yes. So anyhow, but all three of those indicators gave up, got in bullish territory yesterday. So we had three out of three. Now I had to flip the chart, chart two. Okay. And uh, chart all this is on chart two is the SP. SPS uh, or SPY on the daily chart. And for when volume spikes like 30% or higher compared to the days around it, that usually is an exhaustion move. I can go back a long time and, and prove that point. But, you know, the chart gets too messy. So I just, the one I wanted to point out, we had one back on June 30th. I just pointed that out on the chart. Okay. Uh, the bottom window is the volume. We had a surge in volume about 30% higher compared to the previous day. And if you notice, that was a high. The market did pull back uh, over the next, it looks like, about a week or so. Uh, same thing here. Uh, yesterday's volume jumped at least 30% compared to the previous days. That shows exhaustion to the downside. We did gap down today, but volume most likely is going to be a lot lighter today than yesterday. So I'm thinking the, the market is still going to go back up to the to the uh, July 27th high, which is basic. no. Yeah, the July 27th high, which is where that bullish engulf or bearish engulfing pattern happened. Right. And a lot of those bearish engulfing pattern, uh, our highs are easily tested. And we had kind of a push up in volume on that day, too. So I'm thinking we're going to go back up uh, to that 4,600 area on the SPX and test that high. Now, uh, here's <laughs> this is. So anyhow, so I'm making the case. So I'm thinking we're going to make a double high here. Now, if you flip to chart three, okay, maybe going too fast, but no, no, this uh, is good. This is good. We get it. Yep. 
All right. So anyhow, so anyhow, so I'm thinking we, we got enough evidence that we probably rally back to the previous highs of 4,600, which is uh, Ju- July tw- uh, 27th. And uh, here's the case on this: if the if the S- SPX goes back up to that 4,600 area or makes a little bit higher high, and the window below that is the SPX. Uh, VIX ratio. Yes. And this is what I think may develop. Don't know until it happens. Right. It hasn't happened yet because we need to rally first. But if we rally up and the SPX VIX ratio makes a lower high where the SPX uh, makes a higher high, you'll have the same divergence happening, uh, all noted in pink going back the uh, last few years. Right. All that pink areas and pink lines. And that's where the cases where the SPX made a higher high and the SPX VIX ratio made a lower high. And then if that, that happens, that, you know, if, us go, if we went back there, that would be the most deviant thing the market could probably do, too. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. It catches everybody. You know, as everybody's right. It really leaned it on the sell button yesterday. Right. And um, uh, so now that rallies back, they kind of throw in the towel. And that's where you get your, your worthwhile high at. And I'm thinking we're still making a worthwhile high. Nothing real significant, but I think we can get back to 4,200. Which is, you know, a 200 or a 46 to 42, that's what, 400 points. You know, that's uh, what, 8%, give or take? Yes. So that's, that's why I'm thinking what's coming down the road here. But, you know, to really set this trade up is it, a rally, and there's enough evidence to suggest we get back to that 4,600. And that is where I think I could go possibly end up with a sell signal, depending on what that SPX VIX ratio does. Right. So, and, you know, it's always interesting, Tim, isn't it, that, I mean, the more that you can get either highs or lows tested, the more information the market actually gives you. You're exactly right. That's yeah. a good point. So a lot of times, market just doesn't go straight up and straight down. It can, and it has in the past, but your odds are extremely low betting on that idea. You right. The market corrects first, tries to go back, makes new highs, and makes new highs, and, you know, the bears give up. And uh, the bulls come back on, and, and everybody gets trapped. The bulls are long, and uh, the shorts are out of the market. Yeah. So it kind of sets up. So you always kind of look for things that, um, you know, you know, even you know, this this top sets up. You know, it, it'd be you know a fairly high probability uh, risk of, of a good sell signal. So you know, but you know, you can look at those things too. You know, this is just one indicator that could give a signal but the volume indicators might also give a signal test the previous high on a lighter volume which would be awesome um, yeah right right you're right yeah the 10-day trend might be down around 0.9 or lower that'd be more information that you're you're probably uh you know uh, odds of a good sell signal develop and there's a lot of other things once you get you know there's no guarantee we'll get back to the previous oh, high, i but, get it yeah, just stay right there. We're going to quick break. We're going to come right back. We have the Dow Industrials right. right now trading down 31. Nasdaq's off 6. S&P's are off 11 and a half. Stay right there. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim with Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 38. Nasdaq's off 5. S&P's are off 11 and a half. And we're taking a look at this uh, S&P chart. You know, it's going to be interesting, too, Tim, is that after the close out here today, we have Apple as well as Amazon coming out with earnings. So, <laughs> I mean, they have some big weightings inside the NDX as well as the S&P. So we'll see where this baby shakes out pretty quickly. Yeah, this, uh, you know, this week, uh, it seems like the week, uh, okay, next week is a uh, week before option expiration week in in my opinion, that's uh, probably where the, uh, I don't know, the rally may start because a lot of times expiration week is up. So always kind of watch that. So I don't know what's going to go on for the next couple of days. Yes. But uh, in my opinion, because of these indicators, I think we're probably at least making a short-term low here. And we're going to uh, take a stab at probably those highs, my opinion, probably option expiration week, which is actually a couple of weeks away. But okay. we'll see okay. how it plays out. Yeah. You know, I... I uh, Went back to neutral, and so I'm just kind of waiting for the next, you know, hopefully this uh, next Bex trade to line up. So we'll see if it lines up or not. So, right, right. Um, oh, we, we want to go to the next chart. Or? Yes, absolutely. All right, this is uh, this is a short term thing's been. It's kind of an unusual chart. Uh, kind of showed this chart. You know, I thought we'd we'd hit bottom here about a week ago, uh, but what's interesting here is. 
uh, you know, the, the bottom window is the uh, 18-day average of the up-down volume of advanced decline period. No, it's the bottom window is GDX advanced decline percent. is an 18-day average. The next window up is the 18-day average of the up-down volume percent. And anyhow, in a nutshell, when both of them are above minus 10, the market's in an uptrend. Well, the market did go, you know, it gave a bias in early July. And since then, even though the market's pretty much pulled back to where that July bicycle has occurred, both those indicators are still well above minus 10. Okay. Uh, um, anyhow, I trust these indicators pretty well. Right. And there's some, um, there's some divert. Let's go back. I'll make an example here. If you go back to that high of April there, April, May high, that double top. Okay. Uh, it's up around, looks like about, what, 30, 36 range. Yes. And double top there. Yep. And if you go down to both indicators, the first top, uh, you know, uh, the both indicators stayed well above minus 10. And the market rallied actually uh, when it tested that high of 36 right. in, in uh, May. And look what happened to the indicators. Uh, one fell below uh, minus 10. The other one kind of hung around minus 10, but finally fell below minus 10. But either one goes below minus 10 to sell signal. But that rally up to, uh, the second rally up to the high of of um, April was a huge divergence there. Yes. Showing weakness. That was a, a great sell signal. Right. And I'm thinking something yeah. happens here. This is probably going to, what I'm trying to say is, the internals of the market, according to these two indicators, are actually strong, even though prices moved down quite a bit. Both those indicators remain relatively strong, still well well above minus 10. So I'm thinking this is not a start of a big decline. This is going to be a huge divergence because it's going to make uh, a higher a higher lows on both indicators, even if the market breaks uh, below the um, early July low. No, it's just going to be the opposite so, of the highs. I know what you're saying. Because right, even when that's, we're that's on what Tuesday, I'm trying to point out. Yeah. And if you can go back and actually look at other times, this thing kind of set up. Right. So I don't know if the, the GD, GX is actually going to break that July low or not. don't know. But if, even if it does, there's going to be a huge divergence there. Right. So something to watch. So this is not really bearish. It's, it's really bearish if the market, if the price holds up and both those indicators go through the floor. That's when it's really bearish. Here are the offset has price is actually weakened quite a bit, but those both those indicators act are, are fairly strong. Right. So I don't think there's there's something bad starting to happen here. So we'll, we'll and you know it's see, interesting today, Tim. Wrong. Today, you know, yesterday we had some, you know, we had an expansion of volume in the GDX yesterday, but today the contractions huge. I mean, yesterday we did twenty three million shares. Today we're doing eleven. And that that you know the low that I you know the lowest swing low that's going into right now at twenty nine million. So, you know the you know it's not yeah, holding you, price. You need energy to push down that energy. Right. Yeah, you're right. It's not showing up here. Right. So, right. Uh, so it's kind of it's kind of a mushy market right now. Yes. So, but yes. Uh, I think both markets probably rally. You know, I'm thinking what's going to happen here over the next couple of months and how. I think GDX, in my opinion, is probably going to rally right into the September October time frame, and where the uh, SPX, the SPY, may have a hard time between now and then. Right. So they never we'll, make it we'll easy, do they? Happens. <laughs> yeah, they never make it easy, right? Exactly. So you gotta you gotta trust your indicators and stuff. Which, which so. is awesome. Yeah. No. The, listen, man. There's no doubt. It's it is amazing that these indicators have actually held up. Because price-wise, you know, yeah. that thing, hey, that's come down pretty good. I mean, we we know it's come down with, you know, it, the, the volume's contracting, but the reality is is that it's come down, you know. You know what is really cool about the GDX, which I like, Tim, also, is that up at that last high where it actually did fail, that has a lot of volume, man. That that high, that high out which, there on the daily. Which the one we had a couple of weeks ago? No, I'm there going all the way back to, you know, the end of April there. That's 36 million oh. shares. 36 million shares. Up at that high, okay, you know, okay. So that's yeah, yeah that, you're right. Yeah, that's you're talking about the second high. Yes, I'm talking about the second high, right? Right. right. I know. I've seen that too. I think that volume will expand, right? But you know, the internals 
were crap. I know. You no, know? I, 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 that's what, that's why I'd, I'd love that indicator you're talking about. That's what's so cool, man. It really is because it's like, you know, that you know, realistically, yeah, realistically, that's almost an ABC up. I mean, it took it out with volume, and then you had a failure. Yeah. Yeah. You know? right. Yeah. So yeah, this you know. Because I've, I've screwed around, well, obviously I've been screwing around with GDX for a long time. Right. And it's really fine, to, you know, because I used uh, just a bunch of different stuff. Volume figures, uh, you know, moving average, and da 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 yeah. da da And I finally came across these two indicators. And, you know, and i got a 50-day on these these two type indicators, and I do a cumulative volume. And they, they produce a lot of information. Yes. And it looks inside what G, uh, GDX is actually doing. And it does show strength and weakness um, of just by these two indicators. You do so much with them. No, so, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Pretty, so, pretty yeah. cool, man. Well, so, we'll see what happens after this close out here today because we know that the, you know, I mean, we might have a yin and a yang. Apple, one may come out good, one may come out bad, and, you know, we still got the sideways uh, the market. Who knows? But. You know, this yeah, is, we're building. In my opinion, you know, if you're looking at volume on the SPY or SPX today, yeah, you know, we're going to come in way, way light compared to what yesterday is. So, yes, you don't. I don't think you have the energy to push down right here, right now. I'm not right. saying we're going to be up today or tomorrow, but right, you, you um, have to go I'm at least thinking, sideways for a bit, right? It's only fifty million right now. Yesterday we did ninety three, ninety five. So, yeah, yeah. So, well, listen, okay, man, so. it's always a pleasure. Don't forget, folks, you can get a hold of Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. That's ord-oracle.com. Tim, you have a great one and a safe one. Of course, we look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. All right. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one.